And I knew from the beginning this was a historical moment of transformation, which is why I was there in the first place. But that's when I thought, you know, somebody might be interested in a picture of this scene. And so I came back and I called uh, a friend of mine at the New Criterion, and I said, uh, Hilton Kramer, uh, would you possibly be interested if I put down some of, my, some of my observations? And he said yes, and I did. And that's how it got started. I, I still don't know the difference between fact and fiction, really. I, I know what I make up. Fiction. <laughs> 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 but then I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time actually knowing the boundaries. Uh, well, so maybe we can get into some of the details about yeah. the fact and fiction, the art that so, so that, that, that was it. It happened sort of by accident. Can you talk a little bit about what made you undertake your projects and about what you were hoping to learn or accomplish with them? And why don't we start with Jonathan this time? Well, what ignited it for me was uh, something that had been working its way up uh, in my life, uh, ever since I was a little boy, which was uh, understanding the Cold War, understanding why we were uh, under tables, uh, why we were fixated in front of television sets watching the Soviet ships come into Cuba, why uh, I was protesting uh, Vietnam, uh, why the engagement with Russia, with Soviet Union, was so formative. It was partly a fascination with Soviet history, but it was an attempt. I, I felt that in those archives, I would be able to find answers to questions that had bedeviled my generation about the Spanish Civil War, about Katyn, about uh, the terror of the 30s which I had read about, I had read Kessler, I had read Solzhenitsyn, I had read Danilo Kish, I had read Isaac Babel, of course, I read Zhivago. But what was the reality? That's what I wanted. I wanted to, to, to really get as deep into it as possible. And uh, of course, I discovered, as anyone who works in archives knows, there is no smoking gun. Even if you find the document that says, I, Joseph Stalin, ordered the assassination of Kirov, it doesn't mean anything, unless you can find uh, 10 other documents or 50 other documents that help confirm it, that help show it, that help uh, transmute it into some kind of lived reality. And that was, that was really my motivation. I, I, I felt this was a turning point in the history of the West, and, and I think it was. You know, since all these books that you are writing are works that deal essentially with the use of violence to intimidate or eliminate groups of people, or in the case of Jonathan's book, perhaps an entire country. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about what you learned about how and why a government or a political faction uses rapes and executions and torture to reach their political ends. Because I think it's important to point out that in all of these books, it's not just that people have been killed. They're often killed in um, extraordinarily gruesome ways. Um, so the point isn't just to, uh, to rid someone from this earth, but in, to make it a particularly devastating kind of death. And Jonathan, all this is really feeding into the things that you discovered in the Stalin archive about the, the mentality of the creation of this, the kind of Stalinist well, state. The, the Stalinist state employed violence in many different ways. Some of it was directed against individuals. Some of it was directed against nations. Some of it was directed against ethnic groups. Some of it was directed against classes. <coughs> And you have to distinguish in the study of uh, the Soviet reality the various means that are employed uh, in different situations. But I, I like very much what uh, Wojciech said, that the killing begins when the conversation ends. The question is, what ends the conversation? Why does the conversation end? That 
became one of the overriding interests of my project. Because ultimately, <coughs> it takes you into the mentality of the people in relation to the mechanism of the state. 